Hello, I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to Shareviews, brought to you by London South East. Our guest today is Cahal Friel, CEO of Open Orphan, who've just raised £5.3 million in a fundraise and bought virology specialist HVivo. Cahal, welcome back to London South East. Donald, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. You've uh, been busy. Yeah, as you know, we IPO'd six, eight months ago, end of June. We set out uh, reasonably aggressive plans and ambitions and most people thought we could half of them, you might get right. I think we've got there at the moment. Uh, yeah, so quite happy. And we're here to discuss your uh, recent fundraise, 5.3 million raised. So what have you spent that money on? Well, we hopefully won't spend it very much. I think the problem, the previous two companies, they were small, struggling named companies that had a habit of spending money. Our plan was to keep that money on our balance sheet. Uh, first of all, a small bit for the restructuring. We do have a bit more headcount to do. And most of it just to sit there on the balance sheet to reassure large customers that HVivo, they can convert their orders. So the plan would be we're doing something slightly different. We raise money, which I contribute to myself, to keep there and to look at and to build. So HVivo was loss making, but you think it's a very undervalued asset and is worth a lot more. Tell, it, tell us all. Yeah, Donald, uh, HVivo, look, on the previous management team, bear in mind our two new guys who I really like uh, under Trevor Phillips. And Tim Sharpington, they came in 18 months ago to turn it around. But the previous management team got lost. It was a 30-year-old uh, clinical trial services company, very profitable. Then they went off and thought it could be a discovery company, uh, led by our friend Neil Woodford. They burned through, or Neil and company put in £113 million sterling rail cash and lost a good bit of it. But we picked it up for 13. We thought we got a bargain. How much are the assets uh, valued at now, Jill? What you, what, how much value remains, do you think? Look, Donald's very difficult to say, but if somebody spends 113 million in five years, they can blow it all. It's a lot of money. Indeed. Um, but our luck being honest, we have a 24 bed challenge study bedroom. It's almost like a private clinic hospital. It's fully kitted. That's worth 25 or 30 million replacement cost. It has Europe's only, one of the few on site virology laboratories on site. And guess what? It's got eight virology challenge study models worth about 25. So 25 for the clinic, 25 for the models, and seven or eight. So we've got about 55 or 60 million real assets we can put our hand on today. And we picked them up for 13. And they give us two million cash along for good luck that came in the balance sheet. And you've just inherited a, a, a business with a, a, which has a virology, a, viruses, and vaccines are their speciality. So to mm. what extent do you want to get involved in finding a solution to the coronavirus? Yeah, look, look, sometimes the harder you work, the luckier you get. And being honest with you, Donald, six months ago, this wasn't where we thought we'd be. Uh, virology and vaccine has been the Cinderella of the industry. Three or four big companies, Sanofi, Glaxo, have done it. There hasn't been a huge amount of innovation. Uh, but look, we all know uh, the current unfortunate uh, epidemic has brought virology and vaccines to the fore. So look, we're in the right place at the right time. There's very few facilities around the world, like ours. There's very few people who have the services. We don't have the product, but as Big Pharma now needs to rapidly and quickly find solutions to Corona, we've got the clinic, the laboratory, and the challenge studies models to help them very quickly. So how might you actually make money out of that coronavirus? I know it's, a, it's perhaps a kind of a slightly venal uh, question, but how, how would it work? How would you actually connect with the people who need the, need the vaccines, the governments and the hospitals and so on. How does that work? Um, yeah, it's a very good question. Look, we don't want to be seen to capitalise on an epidemic, but the reality is suddenly the world needs to develop vaccines very fast. It's been going slow before. So we've the only facility in Europe you can go in and try patients out very quickly in a quarantine facility. We have these challenge study models, and now you'll say, what are challenge study models? They take five or six years to make. Uh, we've got eight of them, flu, RSV, and that's the raw material you do to try to test as a new vaccine works. So we've got the material to test vaccines. We're not only making them. I'll come to you at the minute. The previous management team did try that, but we basically have all the services to really speed up. And I think it's gone from the Cinderella industry now, uh, the vaccine, and it's very closely aligned to orphan drugs, don't get me wrong, because what we do Challenge study services are a hundred. So there is an patients. alignment between the two businesses. Oh, absolutely. The two models are identical. Uh, we've now built, put them together, a full service CRO, uh, and we do orphan drug trials, which are basically a hundred patients. You complete them in three or four months. We do uh, vaccine development trials, which is challenge studies, a hundred patient, three months. Slightly different dynamics, but almost the exact same to run. 
let me take you to Professor John Oxford. Now, he was the original HVV founder. He's back, he's working on a consultancy basis with you guys. And he's described HVV as possibly a case of too much science, not enough management. Is that a fair assessment of the business that you've just bought? Yeah, I, I would say that was probably the previous management team. Mm -hmm. The current team, say led by Trevor and Tim, would be more business rather than too much science. But yes, we're very lucky. Professor Oxford is a world leading virology expert. He was on quite a lot of TV programs last week. We asked him not to mention our name. We didn't want to spike our share price, but he is the go-to person. He was very involved in SARS. He is back now as a consultant, helping me probably personally, helping the company, and as an advisor because he's a stage where he is very well known. He's gonna work closely with us. Uh, there is opportunities now to help companies that are in the development stage of finding a vaccine to speed that up. And uh, Professor Oxford, we're really lucky, and his book, uh, the front page of his book, which he published, is guess what? It has a picture of the coronavirus, and even more so, the Wahoon coronavirus. So it's quite fortuitous, a book he just republished two years ago is our friend that the world is talking about. So he could see this coming before it came? Yeah, look, Professor Oxford said he's been saying the world needs to wake up. We had SARS, we had Mars, you've all of these, you had Ebola. These viruses are coming thick and fast, and the world needs to wake up to moving away from the traditional vaccine development and more go T-cell based. T-cell based, okay. So how do you monetize things like the world's largest stock of virology studies, which you now own? And I presume the answer is in that T-cell based approach, is it? Absolutely, look, traditional vaccines, which I didn't know until six weeks ago, uh, it developed one hen egg, creates two vaccines for two people. There's only production around the world to develop 460 million. T -cell, so you, make, you put the vaccine into the hen egg? Absolutely, a little, little hole gets made in the egg, you put that vaccine in, you grow it, it's literally a living organism. One egg can produce two vaccines for two people. So there's only capacity in the world for 460 million vaccines for per persons. There's seven billion people. Professor Oxford and the, the team in HVV have always advocated universal vaccines. That's synthetic, it's based on a T cell based, no hen eggs required. You can do it unlimited production. No more hen eggs. No more hen eggs. So that's uh, that's the way. And uh, you guys have got have got uh, lots of these uh, lots of these uh, virology studies. Absolutely. Eight, eight virology studies. Absolutely. And how how do, you, how do you make money out of those? Well, basically, if you want to test a vaccine anywhere in the world, we have the package. You need these. Uh, what's called challenge study models. They're a model that takes five or six years. These are vaccines you can test on. So we're the go-to people. If you want to test a vaccine you have to come to us. There's one other competitor in Belgium, it has got one model, one on the west coast of the States, it's got one model, we've got eight. Wow, okay. Uh, flu vaccines. Now, yeah, you were telling me beforehand that you've inherited a, an almost phase three ready uh, flu vaccine. Um, tell me how close that is to being commercially available and why you describe it as your lottery ticket. Yeah, Donald, look, the SA HVV has been around 30 years doing wonderfully profitable services to pharma. Then five, six years ago, they said, we'll be discovering. They've wasted a lot of that money, but they do have, they have a universal flu vaccine, one of the few in the world that's passed all phase two trials that is nearly phase three ready. But we've told our shareholders, no more money being spent on that. What we will do, we'll get some management time, get meetings with the FDA and European Medicines Agency to see how we can get it phase three ready. At that point, we'll out license it. Uh, that's based on not hen eggs, it's based on T-cells, which is unlimited. We, everybody in the world could have this. That's a vaccine you take once every five or seven years. Everybody can take it, and you don't worry about things going forward. So yeah, it's, we're being very careful. That's why it says a lottery ticket. If Sanofi or Glaxo or somebody wants to come and talk to us, we will talk to them. We'll out-license it, which means they'll pay us an upfront amount of money. And as it gets developed, we'll get a trial or we'll get uh, incremental license fees. Um, how long before it becomes commercially available, do you think, before the Sanofi or the, Va or, or the Glaxo step in? Yeah, well, we'd be careful. We might, Sanofi and Glaxo might want to buy it because we might Indeed. upset their business model. They make a lot of money from selling you a vaccine every year. If we develop this vaccine, that's the annual vaccine is over. It's basically once every five or seven years. So it might be some novel biotech company who will shake up the market. But how do we do it? You have to get phase three. Phase three is probably another year or two. But then after that, it's game on. Okay, fantastic. Okay, let's wrap together the, the threads of o o Open Orphan. Uh, you, your vision for Open Orphan is to become a profitable uh, full service pharmaceuticals company. So how do you actually integrate HVivo into that? 
talk me through the integration and the, and the, and the vision for the, for the integrated company. Yeah, look, John, we're very lucky. We started off saying we'd be purely orphan drugs. Yes, we've done a tangent, but we've got something challenge studies and orphan drug studies are almost identical. Uh, very profitable, very small studies, so we've put them together. We now have a pharma services company that does phase one, preclinical, phase two in challenge studies. That's, we still can't, I'm still pinching myself. We now have a full service pharma company. So we put that together. Critical thing it has to be profitable, and I will make sure it's profitable in the next couple of months. How do we do that? Keep cutting the costs, because we actually had 30 million in revenues last year. We've just got to bring costs below 30 million. 30 million is a lot of costs. We're nearly there. And then finally, I would say is, look, we're talking a big game. I'm talking a big game. I think sometimes you can just be in the right place in the right time. Currently, it looks like it. And acquiring a vaccine company, I say it's, it has been the Cinderella industry for a long time. But I'm just, just trying to reassure my wife that I, I didn't blow the family servers by underwriting this and say, listen, love, uh, Cinderella did turn up the ball. And I think we have arrived and the Cinderella of the industry is now there in our ball gown. So we just got to deliver there are that. significant synergies between HV and the way they do business, the early door stuff. And you, because you do phase one, phase two. Oh, yes, it's absolutely. Well, it's a bit like, uh, so it's a complete services. We now can, a pharma Glaxo can come in, we can do preclinical, phase one, phase two, challenge two, everything, nuts to soup. Very few small services company could ever do that. And that's where I think we're, we're kind of lucky. Uh, it's just come together rather well. We have a bit of work. We've three or six months, but I think by the summertime we'll be very happy. Let me finally ask you about uh, Venn Life Sciences. Give me a progress update on Venn. Uh, you've done great stuff with Venn, but suddenly it's been eclipsed by HVivo. But that's enough for HVivo. Uh, Venn Life Sciences, where are you with, where are you, uh, with them? Yeah, Venn fits like a glove. They're the people doing preclinical, uh, phase one and phase two. They're, they're fitting like a glove, so they've done really well. Their problem was there was 179 staff in Venn when I came on board last summer. Unfortunately, there's a lot less, closer to 100. But in, and our revenue's gone up. So strangely, we take out a third of the staff and our revenue goes up. That's the fact of life. We want to protect the really good fee earners. Uh, and there was a lot of middle management, unfortunately, had to leave. So we're really happy. Venn now is, as somebody said, is actually performing as planned. Losses were imminently to make profits. The last bit of restructuring is coming. We need half a million to a million for restructuring. Restructuring means letting some people go. Unfortunately, that'll be done in the next six weeks. And then we've got a lovely business. So really, really excited in Venn. Mm -hmm. So we acquired it for 0.25 times revenue. We acquired HVivo for one times revenue. We're now trading on one times revenue, about 30 million. Our peer group trade on two or three times revenue. So I don't want people to care, we're not gonna be a five or 10 bagger, but they should be over the coming months when we prove we're profitable and we will earn an asset. Uh, we would see a re-rating from at least one times revenue to two and maybe three. Have you done deals and partnerships with, uh, with uh, Open Orphan in the past few months? Absolutely. Look, Venn has had wonderful customers, some of them we can't talk about, but look, they've had uh, Ipsen in France for 30 years, they've had uh, Survey for 30 years, they've had Karna in Japan. All we did, they were doing ad hoc contracts, we converted them all to three year rolling. So that means every month we know Ipsen has to deliver a minimum amount of services, Karna, uh, Servia and others. So this is, look, be honest, there was no rocket science. It was bringing their ad hoc model into the modern world. Get, if you're so good, pharma companies, please sign a three-year contract rather than a one-month contract. Can we expect more acquisitions from Open Orphan? Oh uh, gosh, no, I think we've done enough. <laughs> we've done yeah, two done takeovers. I just think our shareholders, and I'm probably the biggest one, no more dilution. Uh, we've now a full service company, make it profitable, and it is a really attractive asset. So I know I don't think, originally we thought we'd do a lot of small acquisitions. We've got a sleeping giant, that's HVivo. We put the sleeping giant, we kind of poking it and waking it up a little bit, and we've got a really nice, but no, no more, no more fundraisings, no more acquisitions, it's done. Fix it, and we're in business. Okay, final question. Give me a brief investment summary. Pull together all the strands of HVivo and Open Orphan, and tell me why I should buy your shares. Yeah, I think, look, I keep repeating, we're probably one of the highest Ownership, but real, we're not just ownership, investments of an AIM team in London. We're laser focused on removing losses. And I said to you, we raised money not to spend. We raised money to bolster our balance sheet, to convert HVivo orders. So it's not, the money has to stay on our balance sheet and I'll be making sure I protect that cash. And then the third and final reason, we think there's a substantial re-rating will occur only when we deliver results. As soon as we deliver profitability, 
we think it'll rise. And then the last one, I think, is Kepsel Cinderella. Spent a lot of years wanting to come to the ball. She couldn't go, and eventually her day in the sun came. And I think, hopefully, now it's not guaranteed, but I think Open Orphan H. Vivo, his day in the sun is about to appear for us, given, unfortunately, where we are in the world with vaccines coming into the fore. Carl Friel, thank you so much indeed for joining us. Um, if you enjoyed that interview and would like to see more interviews like this, please subscribe to the London Southeast YouTube channel. Thank you very much indeed for watching.